So let's talk about monarch biology. Yes. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. This is yeah. going to be interesting. So monarch butterflies is what we're going to talk about today. Um, Danaeus plexippus is oh. the scientific name. Okay. Um, but a really interesting insect that we have learned a lot about just in recent um, history. So um, what's really interesting about the monarchs is they are long distance migrators. And okay. we're going to talk a little bit more about their migration but we didn't really figure out where they were going in their migration until the late 70s. So it's rather a new um, phenomenon that we learned about relatively um, recently in history. Okay. So um, let's say January, February, winter time, okay. down in the central Mexico transvolcanic mountains, there is one type of fir tree, an Oyamel fir tree, that the monarchs are spending their winter on. How about that? So, if it wasn't, yes, yeah, so they're going to this one specific tree and they're spending their winter down there. Late January, February, it starts to warm up a little bit and all of these monarchs take off from this uh, transvolcanic mountains and they're headed back to the United States. Wow. So their migration gets really interesting. So I think the best way to explain it is by following one butterfly and then her offspring. Okay. So we have this butterfly that has spent her winter down in central Mexico. Um, February, early March, she reaches the Texas coast, the Gulf Coast. She finds milkweed, which is the only plant they're going to be laying eggs on, and she lays her eggs, and then she dies. Wow. Okay? So then we have her daughter is one of those eggs. Okay. She hatches. She actually migrates a little bit further north. She lays her eggs. She feeds, um, and she ends up dying about four weeks later, okay? So now the granddaughter, we're following the granddaughter. Okay. She also is going to um, feed on nectar sources, migrate a little bit further north, find a mate, lay her eggs. She dies after about wow. four weeks. Now we're at the great granddaughter and she probably is somewhere up in Pennsylvania or maybe even further north around the Canadian border where the limit of milkweed is, okay? okay? And this is when it gets really interesting. All right. Instead of her migrating further north, she's actually going to start migrating south. She's not going to find a mate and lay eggs. She's actually going to live somewhere between like six and eight months. She's migrating all the way back to where that original butterfly was in the transvolcanic mountains. Wow, how about that? So it's only this what we call super generation, <laughs> fourth or fifth generation of the, that original butterfly that is my, making that 2,000 to 3,000 mile journey back to central Mexico. And this is an insect we're talking about, Chris. This is just an insect that's making this trip. Um, How about that? So it's quite amazing, um, this uh, multi-generational uh, migration. Right. Yeah. So they don't spend any time in the United States in the summer? Well, in the summer, so usually starting about August, through late October is when they're migrating south. Okay. Now there are a few populations that are overwintering in Florida. And I should mention that when I'm talking about this long distance migration, it is just the Eastern population of monarchs. So just east of the Rockies. Okay. Got it. In the Western United States, there are monarchs. They don't do a long distance migration. They migrate down to Southern California. Oh, okay. So two distinct okay. populations. Gotcha. What we're mainly talking about is the eastern population the one that does this long distance migration long distance yes without a car right how yeah. about that so yeah insect. how about that, that that's amazing to me okay. yeah but that's it's amazing. funny that you mentioned a car because one of the things i tell people they can you know if we were driving to mexico yeah. we would have to stop along the way <laughs> yeah. refuel yeah. our car right. eat food eat, ourselves right, right. that's what monarchs have to do too but instead of gas stations they're stopping at what we call way stations Good. This is one of the main ways that people can help monarchs on their migration. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's putting in the fuel for the monarchs. And mainly that's going to be nectar sources. Got it. Okay? Okay. So what we want to be planting is we want to be planting the spring blooming stuff for when they're first migrating north. Things like phlox mm -hmm. um, and blue star and so, are early mm -hmm. blooming ones when they're first passing through. Then on their fall migration, we want to be planting things like blazing stars and golden rods um, that they're going to be stopping at on their southern migration. Got it. It's quite amazing. Wow. So 
in order to understand their flight, though, their journey, they had to get tagged, right? Oh, right. So that, remember I said that was a recent discovery, we figured that out. And how we figured that out was by tagging butterflies mm -hmm. and finding those. So we would tag them in um, the United States. And then eventually they found some of those tagged butterflies at that overwintering site. So that's how we figured it out. Okay. That project is still ongoing. Wow. We still do it at the Nature Center. Okay. Um, we're tagging uh, southern migrating butterflies in the fall time. And we put a little sticker on them and yeah. it's through a program called Monarch Watch. Mm -hmm. That tag has a unique number that identifies that individual butterfly. So we know things, if it's recovered, we know um, how long it took to get to wherever it was recovered um, and the distances that they're traveling, things like that. So That's it's cool. a citizen science project too. So you don't have to work at a nature center to do mm -hmm. it. Anybody can um, go to Monarch Watch and purchase tags and tag monarchs in their area. And we actually have a video of tagging monarchs. <laughs> I think somebody here might have done that video oh, for us. Maybe. <laughs> All right, so can we talk a little bit more about the life cycle of the monarchs? Sure, so um, the life cycle is a complete life cycle. So mm -hmm. that means it goes egg, caterpillar, chrysalis, adult. Got it. And what the only host plant or the only plant that they're laying on is milkweed. Okay. The females can lay um, probably close to 400 eggs. Really? And they are typically looking to just lay one per leaf mm -hmm. per milkweed plant. That's not always the case now. And what we're encountering is we don't have enough milkweeds wow. to support all of that. Right. Um, so we're seeing multiple eggs on, on plants and on leaves. So one of the things we can do to help them when they first are arriving back is planting native milkweeds to your area. Okay. So there are a variety of milkweeds native across the United States. So look up what's native in your area mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and plant those so the monarchs have a place to lay their eggs. Wow, that is so good. So let's talk about threats you know, sure. to the monarchs. So unfortunately, there's a lot of threats um, that the monarchs are facing right now. Mm -hmm. Their current population is down about 22% from last year. Um, and we're kind of a little bit of an up and down, but um, Oh, down from last year. Not mm -hmm. the lowest number, but down a little bit from last year. Some of those things are habitat loss, like we talked about um, their overwintering area. There's habitat loss there with some illegal logging happening. Okay. In yeah. their breeding areas here in the United States, um, there's habitat loss, um, things like um, the corners of agricultural fields used to be where a lot of milkweeds would grow. Mm. But now uh, farmers can push the crops right yeah. to the edge with the new machines and things right. that they have. So that's an issue. So um, their loss of habitat. Other issues, insecticides. They're, they are insects, so um, insecticides are going to affect them as well. Um, and then uh, some of the other things is weather. So we talk about this massive yeah. migration if they hit one bad storm, um, you know, they can get blown out into the ocean or they can just die from bad weather. Yeah. So weather can be an issue. Um, yeah. and, but mainly we're looking at habitat loss, but that's where we can do things. Right? Okay. We can all have a little bit of space where we can provide either host plants or nectar plants um, or both. And if we can't do that, we can even participate in citizen science projects like we talked about. That tagging tagging, tagging. butterflies, um, monitoring milkweed populations when you're seeing your first monarchs. That's stuff anybody can um, provide scientists with a lot of data. Okay. Um, so that's stuff that anybody can do. Yeah, that's good. So you have... So this is a milkweed. Um, mm -hmm. It's still early in the season, so our milkweeds <laughs> yeah. are just coming up. Um, but there's a variety of native milkweeds. Um, this one is called butterfly weed. Um, some of our favorites in this area are common milkweed. Okay. Um, we also have one that's called swamp milkweed yeah. that does really well. It seems to be a favorite of theirs. But all across the United States, I think there's around 70 different milkweeds. Wow, I didn't um, that many. So yeah. wherever people are, they can find a milkweed that's right. native to that region. Good deal. So what about tropical milkweed? So tropical milkweed is a plant that is gain, has gained some traction, especially here in the Mid-South, sure. but we're encountering some issues. So tropical milkweed is not native to the Southeast. Sure. What's happening is it's a great plant to have around. It blooms, 
a long time into when the monarchs are migrating south. What's happening is monarchs are stopping and laying eggs instead of continuing their migration south. Um, we think that the reason that super generation lives so long is because they're not laying eggs until they migrate back. So if they're encountering tropical milkweed, um, we think it's stimulating them to start laying instead of continuing to migrate. So my recommendation, natives of course, yeah, yeah. if you really want the tropical, um, cut the blooms back when the monarchs are migrating south or move that plant inside if you can. Uh, gotta ask you this, so the attraction for the monarchs, why are people interested in monarchs, you think? Yeah, so I think part of it is their um, big colorful butterflies, mm -hmm. um, but I think it is a lot of their biology. At yeah. least they, I find that so interesting, their migration, um, their uh, host specificity, so only going to milkweeds, um, and they're ones that we can attract to our gardens too. So. I think another thing is it's in the it's been in the news recently yeah. too. Okay. Um, so monarchs were declared endangered by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. Okay. Um, so IUCN. Okay. However, in the United States, they are not federally endangered. They're not listed on our endangered species list yet. Okay. That may change. Um, they are up for endangered status because of their population declines, um, but currently in the United States, they're not listed as endangered yet. Not yet. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see if that happens. What happens when a uh, species gets listed on that is usually there's money tied to it, okay. so we can start doing some larger scale restoration projects. Okay. So it looks like we need to help out the monarchs. Yes, the absolutely. Can, right? Yeah, and we, like I said, we all have a little bit of space yeah. or we can contribute time um, to citizen science projects to help the monarchs. That sounds good. Mary, that was great information. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah, the Thanks. migration is just so interesting to me. It's so interesting. You're thinking they only weigh a couple paper clips. They're <laughs> making this long distance migration and, and how they know to travel down to that one region is still a mystery that scientists are working on. And see, that's what I wonder. How do they know to go there? I don't know. It's, you know, there, we know a few God, things about, you know, they use their antenna for orientation, but how do they know to go to that one region is still a mystery. Wow. Thank you much. You're we appreciate welcome. that, Mary. It's great information. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please click the subscribe button below.